Hey guys, Metal Jesus here. Now, before we start the video, I wanted to clarify two things. The first one being, originally I planned on this video being kind of like a world premiere announcement of Ken and Roberta's brand new game. And in the video, you'll see us talking about that. But in reality, actually, the, there were some scheduling conflicts and GDC happened, which is the Game Developers Conference. And so we decided that that is probably the best place for them to announce it, which they did. And so a lot of people have heard of their brand new game. But I wanted to clarify that because in the video we talk about it as though nobody knows about it, but some of you who have been following this news obviously will. That said, this video still has a bunch of really cool behind the scenes information, uh, kind of what they're thinking about the game, some of the challenges in programming it, and also it shows footage of the game that's literally just a couple days old. So as of the making of this video, it's the most current footage that you can see of them playing the game. And the other thing I want to mention, because a lot of people have been kind of confused by it, is that this game is not going to be just released for VR. Even though a lot of the marketing and a lot of the interest has really focused on the VR aspect of the game, and that's some of the footage that we show, but in reality, it's built on Unity, and they've already announced that the game is going to be released in standard versions for Windows and also Mac. And as you'll see, in the video, Ken also hints that other platforms are possible. Um, since it's Unity, I assume that would probably be Switch or maybe mobile, who knows? Uh, it all depends on if the game is a success or not. So just want to clarify those two things. I hope you guys enjoy the video. Let's take a look. Hey guys, Metal Jesus here, and I am with Ken and Roberta Williams, the original founders of Sierra, and you guys have an amazing announcement today. You guys are going to be making a new video game. This is crazy, right? Unbel unbelievably. <laughs> I cannot believe it. I'm as surprised as you are. Okay. Yeah, yes. no, we... Uh, yes. It's, it's, it is it's is unbelievable for us. And um, and we still look at each other and say, what in the heck Sometimes are we, we doing? Say, Why, Why are, are we, we doing here? All the time. I mean, the other doing? night, we're working until 1.30 a.m. on it. We've been working 12 hours a day, every seven day, days a week, every day. Weekends too. I, and it's I, like, why? I, I know why, because you guys, like you said, you're passionate about it. Uh, when I came in here and the very first like step into the, the house here, you were on your computer doing Q&A for it. I was. I was blown away. Was really? Blown away. <laughs> well, really? Just because it's, I mean, it's like, that's how passionate, that's that's how oh, deep yeah. into this that oh, you are. Oh, God, yes. It's, I mean, it's our project. We're totally doing um, it. We're both workaholics, kind of. We always have to have a project. I mean, my book got written because I was bored, because mm -hmm. they did the lockdown. We had a summer plan to go cruising on the boat, and suddenly there was this lockdown, and I was staring at my computer, and I needed something to do. Right. And I asked her, and she said, well, why don't you write a book? And so... Then I well, wrote and a book. I was writing a book at the same time. Oh yeah, she was working on a book about Ireland, the well, history of Ireland. Well, it's not as fun as Ken's book. And my, well, no, <laughs> it's, it's very well written. It's actually written, a better though. book than it's mine. It's actually well written, but it's uh, it's I'm, not as interesting to. But Sierra there's so many people. Sierra fans that, yeah. Yeah. that worked yeah. for me. And, but. and I think that's the thing is that when you told me you're going to be making a new game, I was like, okay, I mean, what is it? So uh, tell people the, the name of the game. We're redoing the original Colossal Cave Adventure from um, literally 50 years ago. It was the game that started Sierra. I mean, Roberta, I, I brought home a teletype. Uh, the story's legendary, anything ever written about Sierra. And uh, even a chapter in my book, which was written long before we knew we were gonna do a game, talks about how this game called Colossal Cave started the industry. It, um, yeah, I, I, it just, uh, Roberta played it, got addicted. She played around the clock. And it was at the end of having playing this wonderful game that was an all text adventure that um, she said, well, could you program a game like this for me? And uh, I said no, and then she uh, took me to dinner and sweet talked me. And this, this is, and that became what, what year was that? That was 1980, uh, beginning of 1980. Well, 1979, because okay. well, you got me no, my apple I, in 79. I know, but um, I think I started we started actually working on it. Yeah, we started actually working on it beginning in 1980. Yeah, but it shows how times have changed. Yeah. I mean, uh, Mystery House, we started really in January of 1980, 1980. And I had to learn how to program the Apple II at the time. Yeah. And we released the game, I think, in May of 1980. And with graphics, we had to figure out how to put graphics on it because there hadn't ever been 
a game with graphics on the Apple computer yet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so nobody had ever done it. And so, yeah, so I went all the way to from it. learning to program it. Well, and there was no tools. So there I were had no to, tools? There yeah, was no way of everything. getting any graphics into the I had Apple I write my own assembler. The I mean, Apple it was too? kind of crazy. Mm-hmm. And so when you first told me this, I was like, wait, so are you creating a modern text adventure? And you were like, yeah. no, 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 no. Yeah. This, is, this is way bigger than that. Well, and it's way bigger than we thought when Roberta <laughs> first said, could you redo that game? I forgot, you know, how deep and complex this game is. Yeah. And I just remembered it as being super fun. And I, I loved it. I was addicted to it. Yeah, I couldn't stop playing it, uh, and it's it's a game where you have to have points, mm-hmm. and and the maximum was three hundred and fifty points, and I had to get every single point. Right, it would, that was the main thing, and that is one of the things that I remember. So I know with this particular game, everybody else is going to have the same the what, same. Thing. I want to get every addiction. point. Yeah. Addiction Got elements I haven't seen in adventure games from our time. That we never really even realized were there till we started playing. Where it's almost got like AI, where the game is watching how long it takes you to solve certain puzzles mm-hmm. and adjust things to match your play. Your play level. So it's got action. It's got scoring. It's got. I, it's really. We started with a wonderful design that we didn't realize how good was. It, it, there's a lot of depth to it. And well, but, but I guess my point though is that you know the original is a text adventure, but this is full 3D. Right? Oh yeah, so yes. this, is, this is a very 3D, modern, game. true modern, very modern game. No one's yeah. going to. Uh, no one who plays it or sees it is going to think of it as a retro game. Right. We kind of no. want to avoid uh, people thinking of no, it that no, no. way. It's, it's full 3D world, and it is first person. You move through it. Um, and, and as a first person, so it's out of your own eyes. Mm-hmm. Um, but you're moving through it. I mean, it's completely 3D. It, it's a whole world that we're developing. and But it has sound effects and music and animation. That's definitely, it's not an old game. Right, no. right, right. But it's, the design, uh, I mean, here's one thing I could say as a, as a designer, a game designer, especially of adventure games, is um, the design is so important. I mean, you could have all the bells and whistles and whiz bang and everything, but if the design is not good, in a way, it doesn't matter. You know, I mean, people will look at it and go, "Oh, that's really pretty," but if it's not a good game, what I can tell you for sure about Colossal Cave, it's a wonderful design. It's probably the best design I think of adventure games. Period. That, that's, those are big words coming from you. <laughs> it, I mean, it, the design is timeless. Huh. Wow. Timeless. Well, I know fans of Sierra have been waiting for this, geez, what, 20 years? Long? Yeah. I mean, it's a seven years. years. It's amazing. I mean, yeah. it, it's amazing. Yeah. It's, it's really cool to see yeah. you guys talk about this. Uh, you know, you're going to show me it, and just the passion from this is really, it, I'm, I'm excited. I mean, it, it's, it's cool. It's a labor of love. Honestly, you know, we're we're not even we didn't even think about making money on it or anything. It was just like it started out as a project. We wanted a project, and then it just came to me like, oh, I don't know, why don't we do this? Right. And it was um, there was not very much thought put behind it at all. Just oh, that sounds fun. Yeah. You know, and we started working on it, and the more we started working on it. We well, saw how complex it is we went and how big it is. Weird and thing how... was it was going to be more of a personal project. And I even thought about releasing it under a, a pseudonym mm. because um, I knew that if my name were on it or Roberta's name were on it, there were going to be these expectations. Expectations. Sure. Sure. And, um, and some of the games that you know alumni of the industry have produced have gone on to kind of wreck their legends mm. and I, do it, we didn't job. want that to happen so i but i also didn't want ever again to have to hire a big team manage a team deal with employees none of that stuff <laughs> and um although that's changed <laughs> and now we're doing the, it all the, the team's but grown a little bit yeah. It's grown, well yeah because i coded it and had it almost kind of done and then roberta looked at it and said well you know that looks like crap <laughs> and then I looked at it, and I couldn't disagree. Well, no, I didn't say it looked like crap. I didn't say no, that. You were, you were, that I, you no, you were less polite than that. No, 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 I didn't say it looked like crap. What did you say it looked <laughs> like? She was trying to inspire you to I something I said that greater. it wasn't working well. It wasn't working, yeah. I said it wasn't working well because the 3D, it wasn't done right. Mm, yeah. And I would play it. I would start going through it, and I, it didn't feel right. Hmm. It, just, it felt all wrong and at, just out of kilter and... 
and I felt like I was slithering like a snake low to the ground and everything was this huge thing and I couldn't understand why it didn't feel right. And huh. well, Roberta has a and very high sense of quality and is uh, compulsive about uh, testing. I mean, part of her secret is just testing the crap out of things and trying to think of everything anybody's QA. doing right. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah cool. kind of the ultimate QA person and, um, and really being able to see the game through somebody else's eyes. But basically, I mean, from that start, we wound up uh, redoing Hiring the game an and then redoing it again. And other artists. Yeah, we hired one happened. artist, then two artists, then four artists. Now we have, we're going to have six start artists hiring probably engineers. within now a week or so. Six engineers, six artists. Um, it's become, yeah, there's 16 people or something involved. Hmm. And it's become a real project. We're going to have a sound uh, effects person, although I've been doing the sound effects. Um, up until this point, um, which is fun. All the thousands of details that make it. a game. <laughs> yeah. It's a, um, no, I think people are going to like this. It's a so those are things we're throwback doing. to old adventure games in terms of how it plays. But there's a lot about modern adventure. Because I, 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 it was funny when I uh, wanted to see kind of what was currently in the market. And I started looking for every adventure game out there I could play and uh, would start playing them and they've got these goofy dialogue trees where you know it puts up like five lines of dialogue and you pick one and then you gotta wait while somebody reads the stupid line of dialogue and then the <laughs> other person clicks so you choose I, it's just um no it's... i mean maybe it's just me but in a way i mean i i think a lot of people today never saw an adventure game the way um the old sierra games were because we stopped doing them. We stopped doing them. But at one time, I mean, everybody played them. It was kind of yeah. a uh, popular deal. And it's not that tastes have changed. It's just that Sierra kind of went away. And I hate to say it that way, but I think there's... Yeah, I think people are going to like it. Because, I, I mean, we followed our rule, except for instead of a seven-second rule, it's a millisecond rule. I mean, I want the player in control at all times, moving, having fun, yeah. doing things. And that's going to be true with this game. There's there's really no vignettes. I mean, it's all under the player's control. Hmm. And and that's what's so great about this game. It's so immersive. Well, and, immersive. Uh, well, I, was when a, you put on the headset, I was the say, VR. We haven't wow. mentioned it yet, but I wanted to, you know, like... just. Tell me about the reason and the thought process of making it a VR game. I mean, the truth is it that... It didn't start out that way. <laughs> it didn't start. I, the truth is that uh, one what, what of my guys, Marcus, uh, loved VR and had an Oculus Rift. And he would say, Ken, you got to do VR. And I'd say, I hate VR. I'm not doing VR. I mean, we had never done it. It's annoying. And I had, well, or I, I found in the a 90s picture of it was me terrible, right? sitting in our home wearing a set of VR goggles. And I was being interviewed, and I said, you know, this doesn't feel like it's going to be ready for prime time anytime soon. And that was 28 years ago or and something. It, and it wasn't anytime soon. Yeah, so yeah. I kind of I mean, said no to VR. And then I realized that, um, I, I mean, one of the truth, truisms of marketing, if you ever want to compete, is you're better to be where there's not, you know, 500 games a day coming onto the market. And so I understood that wisdom, and if we did a VR version, that uh, there'd be less competition. And um, yeah, I, you know, it's that old thing like you know, if a tree fell in a forest and nobody heard it, was there sound? And if we release the game and nobody ever plays it, so it would be good to have people play it. So I said, okay, I'll do a VR version. But then we suddenly realized that it really is a different world. You got to think different for it. Yeah. And yeah, so we completely threw away everything we had done, started over. Started from scratch. Started from scratch. And um, <laughs> I mean, it was worth it. And we learned yeah. a lot. And we, one, of, one of the problems with doing VR is that the, um, it's new. And I would watch YouTube videos on how to program for the VR. And then I'd turn to my computer and try to program the same way. And it wouldn't work anywhere near the same way. Mm -hmm. None of the training videos would match up. And so it surprised the hell out of us how good it's turned out. Wow. Yeah, wow. and the, yeah, the thing um, from, from my end, what I deal with from taking a design that was uh, text only and, and you literally typed in to talk to it and to tell it what to do, um, a parser game, to how do I take this design that's, 
it's a perfect design. It's a fun, it's a great design. How do I take it and put it in this, you know, 3D VR world? Uh, there's no typing. You, you know, how do we, how do I let the player know what they can do? Mm. And feel just as in control of what they want to do as with a, a parser game. Yeah, it's like text. making a movie based on it, a book. I mean, you yeah. they're different it's, mediums. Yeah, it is kind of like making a movie and, based on a book. But most people, sort of. when they make a movie based on a book, they right. shrink it down. You know, they'll do 10% of the book. No, but we're not. And we didn't want to do that. We wanted no, every it's line the of dialogue. Game. I'm using most of the dialogue is the actual... Uh, um, messages, uh, you might call it, text mm -hmm. messages of the original game. <laughs> but we have a professional narrator. You're in a debris-filled room with stuff washed in from the surface. A low, wide passage with cobbles becomes plugged with mud and debris here. But an awkward canyon leads upward and west. And, uh, I mean, I've had to... I changed a few a little bit, mm -hmm. you know, here and there. But basically, I wanted to keep it for the millions of people that have played this game. Yeah, I remember that. I right. remember seeing that. I remember reading that. That's that's what that. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Kind of a fear that people, because so many people know the game, that they would just race straight through. That it wouldn't be an adventure uh, game. Okay, sure. But that's certainly not true. The game is so huge and so deep and so intricate. It is that intricate. there's no doubt in my mind that people that played it will want to oh, play, they'll it play it again. again. Oh, yeah, there's crazy. no doubt in, in our minds. And it's, um, I think it's going to bring in a whole new audience that, like, say, Quest 2 is, can't even imagine hmm. of, of people. I, I can't wait to play it, really. So I, I, it's exciting that you guys are jumping back in this. I mean, it, it, I can tell you guys are passionate about it. It, it, it it's going to be pretty cool. So I guess the, the thing that everyone's going to want to know is that, you know, when can they play? You guys are just announcing it, but when no, do you... We're, no, we're not finished. No, <laughs> I we're wish not we finished. were finished. Sure, no, 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 no. But, but when can... When do you... Oh, I would say late def summer. Definitely out by Christmas. Oh, yeah, see, <laughs> well, she says Christmas, Christmas, I think. So, <laughs> you know, so... When it, it's ready. Yes. Yeah, and really, honestly... I think it'll be ready by really, July or August. She thinks November really, or December. Really, honestly, but, I would like to have it out for Christmas. Um, that I think we have plenty of time to do that, mm -hmm. and it will be a great game. Yeah, it'll be but, Windows, um, Mac, and Quest 2 VR, and there's a couple of other platforms that I can't talk about. We're working on it for. Okay. Ken and, would like uh, late summer, but um, I just I just have to be honest. It, if we want to make it and be as great in quality, sure. It, it's going to be close. It'll probably be I think October, November. Well, I guess the, the next thing is too is that you know where can people go to, to follow you to get more information and, and stuff about oh, that? Oh, uh, uh, the website for the game is colossalcave3d.com. Okay, well, cool. And uh, so, uh, and I, I have a blog on it, and I hope to be able to blog from time to time. There's one currently for our company. Well, actually, if you go to kensgame.com, mm -hmm. there's a website there, and I've got a blog where I talk about all the um, misery of trying to develop a game and recruit people. There's a lot. There's a uh, lack of good developers to be hired right now. So assembling a team has that been so its own nightmare. Hmm. Art, it was pretty easy. Huh? But programming is... Oh, As the programming is Art has easy? been pretty easy, but, but the programming has been harder to find. Yeah, yeah the artists I, I mean, have been easier to find than the programmers. Find, yeah, not the programming. I mean the pro finding programmers. Yeah, plus we all work as a team. I mean, we get up in the morning. We all... I, I work pretty much from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Because our we have half the team on the East Coast and most half on the, the West Coast. I think most of the team most of it's probably on the East, East Coast. Coast. I think so. I get up at six a.m. because it's nine a.m. their time, and they start working, and I'm with them all day, mm -hmm. and then I kind of stay on with the West Coast crew. And I'm usually on by about nine thirty. I mean, the more interesting is what now. happens after we release this game, because the company name is now Cygnus Entertainment. We've got a logo, we've got a website, <laughs> and everybody so kind of says, "What comes next?" <laughs> yeah, and. Um, Damned if I know. I mean, my suspicion is that we're going to go back to boating, but we'll see. I mean, I know one of the questions probably will be well, depending on the game. I mean, if the game is good and people love it, that's going to be the question: is well, what's your next game going to be? Sure, but that's a good problem to have. <laughs> yeah, it's a good it problem. is. Yeah, when I started the game, Let's I thought, yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, I wanted to do. I, I always talk about a crawl, walk, run strategy where um, for our very first game, uh, I wanted to start with something fairly simple. 
And with it 20, 20 like hindsight, <laughs> we started out by Somewhat running. Simple. Yeah. Um, no. If, if, if we do another one, whatever it is, it'll be even more than this. Right. And I can't even envision the what that would be. The most complicated game I ever worked on was Phantasmagoria. This is close to it as far as complexity. Mm. And in some ways, maybe harder. Wow. Yeah. Well, very exciting times. I mean, this is great. I'm, I'm, I'm blown away that you guys are back and making this game, and I can't wait to play it. I think it's going to be super fun. So I'll put links down in the video description below so you guys can go follow the progress of the game. And uh, thank you guys so much for coming on and thank thank talking about your game. Thank you for having us. I mean, we're thrilled to be here. Yeah. And to make this make our announcement with you. Well, thank you. Metal Jesus. Yeah, you're the very first person <laughs> very first outside like, of anybody. 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 To know what you're doing. the very first. I, I feel very honored. Yeah. <laughs> this is really cool. You are. You're the very first. Awesome. All right, guys. Thank you for watching. All right. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, man. <sighs> smooth. Drunken Master Paul strikes again. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty smooth. That's it good. is. Yeah. It is good. It is.